Friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, November 21st, 2021, the 26th Sunday of Pentecost. Today is the last Sunday of the church year as Advent and the weeks of preparation for Jesus' birth will begin next Sunday. This is also the Sunday before we celebrate Thanksgiving in the United States, and we will have a time of prayer of thanks for all of the blessings of our lives. And today is also Reign of Christ Sunday, sometimes called Christ the King Sunday, celebrating that Jesus is the ruler of our lives. Our Advent at Home kits are now available. Volunteers will be delivering them to folks who aren't with us for in-person worship. If you want a kit and haven't received one by Friday, November 25th, please let me know. I think the cold has really decided to come and stay here in Wisconsin. The wind seems determined to blow us all into Lake Michigan and there were snow flurries while I was putting gas in the car today. I'm trying to be philosophical about it all, knowing that like everything else, the earth needs a rest, a break from being so abundantly productive. Seasons like the dark and cold of fall and winter are part of the natural rhythm. Nothing, yourself included, can run without stopping. In every week, we're supposed to have a Sabbath, a time to breathe and recenter ourselves on God. And in every year, we have fall and winter to allow ourselves and the earth to rest a bit, to regroup, to gather close and stay warm while dreaming of the future. The early Black Friday sales are already clogging up my mailbox and email, and I'm trying to be philosophical about that too. I know for many people, these sales are perhaps the only way they can stretch their dollars and provide for their family a celebration this time of year. But I also know that the crush and rush to save big might cause us to think we need things we really don't to add to the clutter of our homes and our lives. Whatever you're doing on Black Friday, I urge you to slow down and breathe. If you're out and shopping, please remember that store and shop clerks are already having a hard time. The shortages on the shelves are not their fault, and there's little, if anything, they can do about it. The same goes for restaurant and grocery store workers and anyone in service. It's a hard job in the best of times, and these are not the best of times. If you're doing something else, it's also a good idea to slow down and breathe, to remember that you were created in God's image, in God's love, and made for goodness in this world. COVID continues to be a part of our lives, a real and dangerous part. Unfortunately, rates of infection in Wisconsin are rising. That's not what we hoped to see as we head into winter and the regular cold and flu season, but here we are. Please, for my sake, for your own sake, for our entire community's sake, be careful. Do what we know works, Wash your hands often, cover your nose and mouth, keep a healthy distance from folks, avoid super crowded places whenever you can, stay home as much as possible if you're not feeling well, and talk with a trusted medical provider about vaccination, not just for COVID, but check all your immunizations, please. There will come eventually a point when COVID turns from pandemic into something scientists call endemic, something we can live with, that we know how to prevent and treat well, but we aren't there yet. Folks are still sick, hospitals are still busy, and folks are still dying. Please, let's work, keep working together like we have been these past 20 months to do the incredible and faithful work of keeping ourselves and our communities as healthy as we possibly can. As I was preparing these materials, the verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse case in Kenosha came down. Rittenhouse was acquitted on all of the charges. My deepest prayer in this moment, in this very early moment after the verdict has been reached, is for peace, for the people of Kenosha, for the families of those most intimately involved, and that together we might all find a way forward where true justice is possible. In parish news, Thank you to everyone who helped support the Black Creek Youth Group Turkey fundraiser. Your generosity is most appreciated. The Black Creek Christmas Giving Tree is now up near the elevator with cards containing gift requests for families in our area. If you're interested in helping out, you take a card, 
write your name by the number of the card so we know who's providing the gift and bring the gifts to church by December 5th so they can get to families in need. If you have questions, please talk with Sue Bees. Jordan Chaudhry's family is once again having a toy drive for Children's Hospital in Milwaukee where Jordan received treatment. You can bring unwrapped gifts to all three churches between now and the end of the year. Toys for all ages are appreciated, but there's always a great need for toys and gifts for older kids and teenagers. If you'd like me to come and collect gifts you might have, please just be in touch. Thanks to the miracle of technology, our Christmas program will come to you from Black Creek and Nichols and from Jerusalem and Bethlehem as well. Join our children and youth as they help tell the story of Jesus' birth, celebrating the miracle of God coming to earth during worship on Sunday, November, December 19th at all three churches at the usual time and in this format as well. Christmas Eve is Friday, December 24th. Join us for a time of scripture and carols with communion and candlelight to welcome the newborn Jesus. In-person worship will be in Cecil at 3 p.m., Trinity at 5 p.m., and Black Creek at 7 p.m. And there will be a special edition of this worship as well. In parish prayers, Gary Shepherd from Trinity is gratefully recovering well from a recent heart attack and surgery for two stents. Phil Hurt from Cecil received good news from his heart doctor regarding the thickening of his heart muscle, and they will continue to monitor it. Paul Vanden Heuvel, friend of Trinity, is improving after his accident and many hours of surgery, and has today, Friday, moved to the rehab floor of the hospital. Matt Lehman, friend of Trinity, is recovering from a stroke and heart complications. Jeremy, grandson of Jim Rucci from Black Creek, has begun cancer treatments. Sue Olson, mother of Tony Klemp from Navarino, passed away on Wednesday night after struggling with COVID and its complications. And Kelsey Hoyman from Black Creek is deployed with the U.S. Air Force. As we move into this holy season of Advent, the present seems so unsettled that it's hard to imagine what the future will bring. It makes me think of Mary and Joseph preparing for Jesus' birth, both aware of how big the task before them was raising the Messiah so he could embrace his ministry, and how utterly unaware they were of what they had gotten themselves into. It's kind of what our lives were like. But like Mary and Joseph, we trust that whatever tomorrow holds, we know beyond all doubt that God is there before us, loving us completely. And please remember we are in this together. There is no prize for toughing it out or trying to go it alone because you think you need to be strong or independent or something. We are here with and for each other. I am here only ever a phone call, text, or email away. Only together will we make it to the glory of God's kingdom of abundance for all. And now, I invite you to bring yourself to a spirit of worship. We come together to worship and praise God. We come together to pray and seek God's guidance. We come together to celebrate and share God's love. We come together in thanksgiving for God's presence with us. Our first hymn, Jesus Shall Reign, was written by the great congregational hymn writer Isaac Watts and is half of his interpretation of Psalm 72 a celebration of God's reign and the joy of all creation as it praises God.
And now, remembering that God is with us in all things, we pray to open ourselves to God's spirit with us in this moment. God of unending blessings, we come today reminded of your incredible love for us and for all of creation. We give thanks for the power of your grace that carries and guides us each day. As we worship, help us remember all that you have given to us. Help us to be faithful, sharing your love in all we say and do. Help us to be grateful, offering compassion and kindness to a world in need. Amen. And now we join our hearts and minds together in prayer, deepening and strengthening the ties that make us Christ's community, uniting ourselves with Christians throughout time and across the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come today with joyful hearts for the blessings of our lives. We thank you for friends, for family, for community, for our parish, and for all the ways you connect us one to another. We give thanks for the beauty of creation, these places that you have entrusted to our care and nurture, and the ways that creation changes, reminding us of your presence with us in every change and every season of our lives. Help us that in all things we might find joy in the small miracles of daily life. Help us to look for and recognize and celebrate goodness, kindness, and compassion. Help us to see you in the face of our friends, our family, the strangers we meet, and in our own faces. Help us to remember that there is no one you do not love. Help us remember we are connected, each of us, to every other person and to the living presence of your creation, that we depend on you and on each other for our very lives. We thank you for all of the ways that you have given us to gather and to stay connected, guide and encourage our entire parish as we continue to learn together how best to be your people in this time and place. Inspire us that we might share your love with our words and our actions. Be with and keep safe all those who work on our behalf guide and protect those who stand in harm's way in our name, soldiers and sailors, firefighters and police officers and first responders. Keep them safe as they do their work. Be particularly with Kelsey as she has deployed with the Air Force and with those who served in Afghanistan as we continue to adjust to the end of this very long season of war. Be with all those whose lives provide for ours whose work is so often unseen and taken for granted. Be with those who provide the goods and services we depend on, those who provide us with food, shelter, utilities, social services, and more. Help us that we might be truly grateful for them and for their labor on our behalf. Help us to show and share our gratitude more directly. Help us to be kind and compassionate to those who serve us in stores and restaurants and more. Help us to understand how difficult that work truly is. We pray, O oh God, in these days for our medical professionals and facilities. They're overwhelmed and tired, and they have struggled for so many months against COVID and uncertainty. They need our support and your loving presence to sustain and encourage them. Be with doctors and nurses, orderlies and cleaners, technicians and nutrition providers, and all who work in any way in hospitals and clinics, nursing and care facilities, and child care programs. Bring them your peace, your love, and your hope, and remind them that we are with them. Be with those who lead and govern on any level, those entrusted with the sacred care of leading our communities and the world, Inspire them that they might do what is just and what is right for all your children, for all creation. Be particularly with those who make decisions about our collective health and safety, creating and carrying out public policy. Be with our teachers, students, administrators, aides, and families, and give them the courage and the grace they need. Fill them with your love. Remind them that they are in our hearts, our minds, and our prayers. Help us, O oh God, that we might be good hosts to the refugees who have come here to the United States to find a home from Afghanistan and Haiti and everywhere. 
Help us to be just and compassionate to all who are seeking refuge and safety here. Help us to remember that nearly all of our ancestors came as immigrants or refugees seeking a life of peace. Guide us that we might live into the welcome so boldly proclaimed by the Statue of Liberty and by the dream of our country that all might find a true home here. Help us, O oh God, that we might be in solidarity with those who struggle in body and in mind and in spirit. Be with those who are recovering from surgery and hospitalization, with those who are dealing with the particular challenges of cancer and its treatments. Be with all who are struggling with COVID, those who have been recently hospitalized, those who are dealing with its long-term effects. Be with Matt and Jeremy and Paul and all in need of your healing love. Grant to all who are dealing with health problems your healing and loving grace in companionship. We know that you can heal bodies, but more importantly, O oh God, in all things we know, you can help our spirits be whole and one with you. Help all who struggle to know that we are with them in prayer. Be with those who are living with the challenges of this time in the life of the world. It weighs heavy on us all and makes us weary. Help us and give us the courage we need for this moment in our lives and in the life of the world. Comfort those who mourn, O oh God, and be with all who struggle with grief and loss. Be with Sue Olson's family in these tender early days of grief. Bring comfort to all who grieve, whether that loss is new or many years old. Remind us of your presence and your promise through Jesus of life everlasting. Be with those who are struggling in the midst of natural disasters, fires, floods, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions, and more, and bring your peace to all creation. Be particularly with our Canadian neighbors dealing with such devastating flooding as they work to protect others. Be with all the places in this world you love so much that are dealing with war and violence and unrest, Afghanistan, Haiti, Tunisia, Myanmar, Syria, Tigray, the Sudan, the Congo, Burkina Faso, Palestine, Israel, Colombia. Be with all who are refugees displaced by violence and seeking places to live in freedom and in safety. Continue to be with the family of Caitlin Kelly and with all the missing and murdered indigenous women across the country. Help us grapple with the reality of our history, particularly the history of slavery and residential schools. Help us listen and act that we might find a better way forward that honors the dignity of all people. Be with all who are victims of violence on any scale here at home and around the world. Be particularly today, O oh God, with the people of Kenosha after this verdict has been handed down and we pray for their peace and safety in their community and for a way forward that brings justice and hope. Help us, help us examine our hearts and our minds and our lives. Help us work together to create a way forward. Help us find a path through this madness towards the true and lasting peace you desire for us and for all creation. Be with all who are victims of sexism, racism, and all of the is isms that create hatred and discrimination. Be with all of us, O oh God, as we, and help us. Help us ask ourselves the questions that will build a better future. Help us find a way to do our part and to challenge and end all that causes us to be divided and give us the strength to see a way to create the community you want for us and for the world a place where all are truly and deeply safe. Renew our hope, strengthen our faith, deepen our patience and inspire our hearts. Give us the strength we need for whatever lies ahead. And hear these prayers of gratitude as we prepare to give thanks this week. Gracious God, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for the wonder of your creation the water and the earth, the sky, and all the creatures who inhabit your world. We thank you for the fruits of the earth that in their season provide us with food and drink. 
We thank you for the people who tend crops and manage farms that we might be provided with nourishment. We thank you for their labor on our behalf. And in these difficult times, we pray particularly for small and family farmers they might, that they might have strength and patience. We thank you for our homes, families and friends who provide us with companionship, encouragement and love. We thank you for all that is good and gracious in our lives, all the blessings we have and continue to receive. We thank you for the work you have given us to do and the time you have given us to rest and relax. We thank you that we live in places where we can appreciate the beauty and diversity of your creation every day. We thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ and his ministry, the path he showed us and the work he entrusted to us. We thank you for minds that are able to think, hearts that open to love, and hands that are anxious to serve you. We thank you for all who seek to live by your word, who pursue justice and peace and truth, for all who have gone before us and for all who will come after us. We thank you for all that we are, for the gift of life. We pray that we might be faithful stewards of the bounty you have given us, that we might live and serve you. And together, in gratitude and thanksgiving, we pray the words that Jesus taught his first disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we come to a time of confession because we know that none of us have lived as fully and faithfully as we could have, but we also come trusting in God's great grace and love. Let us pray. Generous God, you have given us so much to be thankful for, but we confess we often forget. We get caught up in our lives, our vision narrows and we cannot see what you are doing in the world. Our hearts close and we cannot see how you are at work in our lives. We take too much for granted, the gifts you have given us, but more importantly, the people you have brought into our lives. Help us and forgive us. Correct our vision that we might see you in the face of our friends and family, strangers and enemies, and in our own faces. Open our hearts that we might be truly grateful people who share your love in all we do. In hope and faith we pray, amen. And now we join our hearts and minds together in a time of silence, bringing our own confessions to God's forgiving love. Hear the good news. God loves you. God receives you this day, pours out forgiveness and grace, and offers you another chance to live as Jesus' disciples. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading comes from that complicated book at the end of the New Testament, Revelation. Written in the style of other ancient apocalyptic literature, including the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, John's revelation tells the story of the downfall of the empire and the coming of God's kingdom. It isn't and never has been meant to be taken as a literal metaphor, a roadmap for the end of the world, but it's a story and quite a dramatic one to draw our attention to the differences between the world we live in and the world God wants for us and for all creation. Today we read from the beginning, from the opening greeting, celebrating God and Jesus as present with us throughout all time. Reading from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from the one who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before the throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. 
to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, ministers serving his God, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Our next hymn, For the Fruit of All Creation, is set to a Welsh lullaby and reminds us that we should give thanks to God for everything the earth produces that sustains our lives and for God's great love throughout our lives. Our gospel reading is from John. Jesus has been arrested and is brought to the Roman governor Pilate to be questioned. Alone, Pilate and Jesus have a conversation about if Jesus is a king, and if he is, what kind of kingdom he rules over. Reading from John chapter 18, verses 33 through 37, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the living of these scriptures. Amen. Welcome. 
to the last Sunday of the church year, reign of Christ Sunday, or as it is sometimes known, Christ the King Sunday. The church year, as you might have figured out, doesn't follow the usual calendar of January to December. Instead, we start our year in Advent, as we will next week, with the time of waiting and preparing our hearts and our minds for the miracle of Jesus' birth. The church year will follow through Christmas and into the weeks of Epiphany, thinking about Jesus' baptism and the beginning of his public ministry. Then we'll have Ash Wednesday and another time of waiting and preparing during Lent before all that Holy Week brings, before we can celebrate the miracle of the resurrection at Easter. Then we'll have some weeks of Easter, 50 days, to get us to Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit before that long season of Pentecost, sometimes called ordinary time, stretches through summer and into next fall. That routine of Advent to Advent for the church calendar is quite old, part of one of the oldest rhythms of the church's life together, beginning each year with the waiting and preparing for new life, for God coming to be fully human. The idea of Jesus being our king is as old as the church going back to the beginning, the earliest days of resisting the Roman Empire, the faithful putting their allegiance not in the emperor, but in Jesus as the authority in their lives. But the church calendar having a separate day to remember and observe that reality only dates back to 1925. 1918 had seen the end of World War I, but the politics, particularly in Europe, were increasingly volatile. Mussolini had taken over power in Italy. In Russia, Lenin had died and Stalin was coming to fill the void. And in Germany, Hitler was rising to power, forming the Nazi party, publishing his book and rallying support to oppose all the treaties that had ended the first war. Looking around at all of that, particularly living in Italy, the then Pope, Pius XI, was worried about nationalism, about people's obsessions over their own country identity. So he issued a decree, creating Christ the King Sunday to help the faithful remember that we don't owe our allegiance to any one nation or any particular country, but that our faith in Christ as King and ruler in our lives is supposed to take priority. Now, nearly a hundred years later, a lot has changed in the world, but in some ways, very little has changed at all. Nationalism, the unhealthy side of patriotism as the only goal, defending us at any cost. It's all on the rise again, just about anywhere across the world. And it got me to wondering why did the Pope then think that a day like today would help wondering how is it he thought this would correct the nationalism and refocus people's hearts and minds on God? Today asks us to think about Jesus as king, the ruler and governing power in our lives. But royalty, the idea of a monarchy, has always rubbed a little wrong here in the United States. We fought a war, after all, to gain our independence from a monarchy, to say no to that kind of obedience in our lives from one seemingly random family line that claims all kinds of authority and power. Many Americans, interestingly, are obsessed with the British monarchy, particularly since Princess Diana, but that doesn't mean we're actually all that keen on having a king or a queen to rule over us. We like and treasure our independence, our representative democracy, our say in how we govern and live. And yet, we find ourselves here on Christ the King Sunday being asked to remember that our identity isn't first as Americans, but as disciples of Jesus. Being asked to put not any earthly power at the center of our lives, but to let Jesus be king, ruler, sovereign for our lives. We are called to give our loyalty and our lives not to any ideology, not to the left or the right or the center, not to any human politician, but to Jesus, to the way he taught us to live, the path he showed us, the call he issued to us to continue the work that he began. It's interesting to me that this Sunday, 
when our hearts and minds are being called back to Jesus as the ruling power of our lives is almost always also Thanksgiving Sunday, usually just before we sit down at our loaded up tables with friends and family and give thanks for the abundant blessings of our lives. The two events, Reign of Christ Sunday and Thanksgiving aren't intentionally connected to one another, but I wonder if they shouldn't be. If the celebration and remembrance of Jesus as King and the intentional offering up of our gratitude and thanksgiving aren't really two parts of the same idea. In a world full of temptations and tests, things that compete for our time and our attention, distractions that would have us put worldly goods and people at the center of our lives, maybe we need to have thanksgiving for the reign of Christ each and every year. Maybe we need to learn again every year how to be grateful subjects of Christ the King. In a world full of sometimes overwhelming choices about what we will do and where we will shop and how we will spend our time and our money and who we will follow and how we will live, being a disciple of Jesus makes things a whole lot simpler. A few weeks ago, we talked about the greatest commandment and talked about keeping God at the center of our lives, about letting the way that Jesus would have lived guide and inspire our choices today. Taking seriously those bracelets that were so popular a few years back that asked WWJD, what would Jesus do? That's what Christ the King is about for us. Allowing how Jesus lived to guide our lives, to think about how he would have acted and reacted to every situation we find ourselves in, to letting his spirit rule over ours, to teach us obedience and patience to something greater than ourselves, to the idea of God's kingdom becoming real in our lives and in the life of the world through our every act, our every interaction, in every minute of every day of our lives. So when we're confused about a choice, how to spend our time, or our money, or our talent, or our resources, we stop. And we ask ourselves what Jesus would have done. How would he have behaved? What choice would he have made? Of course, we have to do a lot of interpretation because a lot of the things that we deal with in 2021, he didn't have to deal with in first century Palestine, but still we can use his path, his approach to life to guide us. Asking ourselves, are we widening the welcome? Are we inviting more people in? Are we helping people feel included? And are we reaching out to the poor and the hungry and the widow and the outcast and the stranger and the foreigner? Are we building walls or bridges? Are we feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the imprisoned, offering companionship to all? And, and why should those questions be related to gratitude? to giving thanks, you wonder? Well, in a world full of choices about how to live, a world that offers us 100,000 different ideas about where our allegiance should lie, we are free of the burden of those choices. We have been given the clear call and command about how to live. Do what Jesus would have done. Keep God at the center of our lives in the reign of God. The fullness and abundance of the kingdom will come for us and for all creation. So as we go into this week, a week filled for many of us with thoughts of gatherings and pie and shopping and time with those we love, I want us to think about what's at the center of our lives. Who rules over us? Whose life gives ours meaning and direction? Is it the things and powers and principalities of this world or is it Jesus? and the life that he lived, and the way that he loved. And in all things, I hope, we give thanks for that inspiration, that guidance, that King, Jesus, in our lives today and always. Amen. And now, having gathered for worship, let us give thanks for God's love for us and for sharing in God's work in the world for all God's blessings in our lives. Let us pray. God of grace, we thank you for this time of worship. May we always be grateful people who recognize your love in every moment of our lives. 
guide us that we might continue our work of building a faithful community of your disciples. Throughout this week and in all our days, guide us that we might follow in the path that Jesus showed us. Multiply the good that our lives and our gifts can do as we work to reach out to those who have been excluded. Comfort those who are struggling. Rejoice with those who are celebrating. Weep with those who are grieving. And love everyone as we find them, without exception. In Jesus' name we dare to pray. Amen. Our last hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, comes to us from our German roots, giving thanks for God's blessings and reminding us to praise God who keeps us in grace and guides us through all life with joyful and thankful hearts. friends receive this benediction. May you know the love and support of our parish that sustains and guides you in all that life brings. May you know the joy that is ours through our faith in Christ. And may in all things the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the presence of the Holy Spirit bring you courage and peace today and always. Amen.